All right, folks, slightly different video this week. Um, this is part two of the uh, Honda Hornet 600 Carberry builds. Um, so I'm in my civilian clothes. It's a nice weekend day. And we're in a little garage here at Mobile Motorbike Mechanic HQ. So these are the carbs that came off the bike. And as you can see, they are pretty grotty. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tear these down and then um, I'm going to put the bodies into the ultrasonic cleaner, clean them up. We'll get all the jets out. We'll get everything cleaned up, tidied up, sorted out. <sighs> Handy dandy organizer for keeping parts in order. You can see we've got another set of carbs over here that we're currently rebuilding. And so I've always got these organizers to put all the bits in. And we've got sets of carbs over here that we've already rebuilt. We do a lot of carbs. Anyway, um, right, first things first, you need to know which number one carb. So imagine them being on the bike. That's the way, so that's gonna be number one, two, three, four. So what we're gonna do, obviously as you're turning the bike, turn the carbs over and twisting them around, you might get confused, but you always go back to, put them on the bike, number one's on the left. So I'm gonna start on this one which will be number four. I'm gonna go three, two, one, but we'll put them into the pots like that. As you can see, they are absolutely filthy. Right. Decent fitting screwdriver. And we'll start taking them apart. One, two, three, four, number four. Flight bowl. And as you can see, there's a load of residue and crud in there. And all of the, these should be brass. These, <clears throat> if you look at this set of carbs here that we've cleaned. Oop. Here's one we did earlier. As you can see, they're brass colored. They're not minging colored. So we'll put those back over there. Right, so that's all the float bowls off. Put them into our little organizers here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the float and the float valve out. So, got some tweezers. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna push very carefully. And you see the float valve, um, the float pin there. We just gotta get that out. Oop, there it comes. So that's the pin out for that one. Oh, hang on. That's number four. See? And then you pull the float out and you've got the float valve on the bottom of it. So, all that lot in there. Do the other three. Right, so with the floats and the float valve, uh, floats and the float valves removed, you can see these are the float seats. Now on some carburetors uh, there we are you can remove the, float, the valve seat and you get replacement ones on these ones these are pressed in so on these ones there'll be a little screw that holds them in you can actually see the dimple on the edge there where the screw's been held, held in it but anyway um, on this type these are pressed in so what we'll do when we've cleaned all the bodies and everything we'll polish the seats because that's um, a bit of a weak point on these carbs um, to polish them all we do is we get a q-tip and a bit of um, tea cup and just give it a polish in there with um on, on a drill yeah and you can just polish those up gives you a gives you a decent seat for the uh, for the valve to sit against so yeah anyway we'll do that in a bit so what we need to do is we need to get the pilot jet out we need to get the main jet out and we need to get the emulsion tube out. So some carburetors are eight mil, some carburetors are seven mil for the emulsion tube. I think these are sevens. Yeah, they are. So you need a decent flat bladed screwdriver. Oh, there we go. So that's 
the main jet gone. So this is your main jet. You should be able to see through that very easily. Should be a, a fair decent sized hole through that. If you can't see through that, then it needs cleaning, obviously. We're gonna clean it anyway, but. So that's your main jet. So that can go, oh, hang on. I've done it again, haven't I? It's number one, two, three, four. Because we're back to front. And then your emulsion tube. You undo him and you'll have a series of holes up the side of the emulsion tube. You've got two there, five there, two there, five there. And you, again, you need to be able to see through the middle of that one. So it'll need cleaning. And then finally, pilot jet. Oops. Oh, bloody hell. Now, pilot jet, it'll have a couple of holes at the bottom and it'll have a hole through the middle. Very, very, very tiny hole, quite hard to see. But if you hold it up to the light, like a periscope, or like a telescope, you'll be able to see through that. If you can't see through it, you need to get a very, very thin piece of wire and just gently go at it and, until it's clear. I'll show you how to do that in a bit. Right, so then we need to get the other three carburetors apart. Um, on some bikes, the inner two jets might be different to the outer two jets, so that's why it's important that you don't just throw them all together and uh, mix them up. The other thing is, some of the main jets and pilot jets on some carburetors do look similar, but not on these, so we're just dealing with them on the Hornet carbs at the moment. Right, so, in there. Ooh. This is why you have to have a decent set of screwdrivers that fit well, because they're brass parts. And uh, if you start um, with a bad fitting screwdriver, or poorly fitting screwdriver, you can easily gouge the jets. And then if you gouge the jets, you're gonna be in a world of pain trying to get them out. Do, 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 do. Mm. All right, do it properly. Do, do. And you can see on these jets, if I just give it a scrape, just how much rubbish is just sat on the top of it. It's just horrible. So they're all gonna be furred up. Oh, I think this is the one that we took out when we were at the customer's house, because it's loose. Yep, yeah, it is. Right. There we go. So that's in effect the bottoms. And if you look in there, yeah, you can see all the rubbish that's in there in the bottom of each of the curb. You can see it's all, it's all horrible. All right, okay. Anyway, so that's the bottoms of every carb done. So now we need to turn it over and do the tops. I'll start by removing those hoses. Absolutely filthy, but no worries. Right. Okay, so remember how they were on the bike. This is now number one because we've turned them over, turned them over, turned them over, and we just want to take the lid off. I think we can take the lids off without taking the choke mechanism off, but maybe not. We'll find out in a minute. Mm 
Now, when you take the last screw out, make sure you keep your thumb on the top of the uh, cap here because there's a whacking great spring inside. It's not under much tension, but you don't want that firing across your workshop and disappearing. And then this is your diaphragm. Occasionally on some carbs, you might find little O-rings in here and things. So just be careful. But again, Honda Hornet, we're just dealing with today. So very, very carefully tease it out. Now that should pull out of there. But you can see, yeah, there you go. That was quite jammed in there. And yeah, you can see the green spooge of death that's on the needle there. So that needle will sit inside the emulsion tube like that in the carburetor. And if, it was, if it's all jammed up, so as the, as the throttle opens, that needle rises out and allows more fuel to come out of that. But yeah, it's all jammed up and gummed up with old fuel. That's the reason why when we twisted the throttle, nothing happened. Right, one down, three to go. just clears the choke mechanism so that's good on some bikes you have to take this off but not with this one if you didn't see part one where we went to the bike to take these off link in the description um, the owner of this bike that only just bought this bike from the previous owner and apparently it had been stood for quite a while maybe 12 18 months something like that so that's the reason why we think these were all gummed up right so that oh no i was about to say that's as far as we need to go with these but we don't so we need to take these parts off to get to the air jets that are underneath so oh you bugger i don't think these have ever been removed oh. <laughs> See all the again staining of old fuel. Air fuel mixture screws. I tend not to remove those because they're factory set. They're going to be okay you're going to leave them alone so i don't i don't mess with these i know people that do take them out clean it all through and whatever but i don't that's just me right so that's everything as far as i'm concerned stripped down like i say we don't take the carbs individually apart and off the rail we don't take the air um, air fuel mixture screws out but that so a compressor helps um right I'm going to get this lot into the ultrasonic cleaning tank. Um, I'm going to do the float bowls as well. We're going to do these parts. Um, we're going to do the caps. And I'm going to do the needle, the needles as well. Because they're all minging. Right, so we've got the um, ultrasonic cleaner loaded up. We're just about to put in the last of the parts so what i want to do is i want to put all of the jets in the ultrasonic cleaner just to agitate and get rid of all the rubbish that's inside the jets however this is my little holder for all my jets and these are my jets now because i'm getting on a bit i have to do a sherlock holmes impersonation now that jet this is number one carburetor and that jet is 105 main jet 
and a, I think it was a 40 pilot jet. Yeah, 40 pilot jet. Okay, so that's number one carburetor. Number two carburetor, the main jet, is 108. So different size. So when we come to reassemble the carburetors, we've got to make sure that we put the right jets into the right holes. So when we were disassembling it, I said, sometimes the inner two are different sizes to the outer two. The pilot jets are all the same, they're 40s, but the main jets are different. So the inside ones on this set of carbs, 105, outside two, 108. So now we know that, we can grab everything out of our little pots here. And we can stick it all in our little basket. However, what I said before about ultrasonic cleaners only being as good as where they can get the water into and agitate things, these pilot jets, all, all four of them, are blocked. So what we're going to have to do is just get a, um, a very fine bit of metal <laughs> so what I use is a, a single bristle off a brass brush and you're just going to run it up the inside of the jet until it clears there you go that's cleared and then you blow it through and now I can see through that so that's one ready to go I'll do the next one little clean yep yeah that one's done sometimes these jets can be oh, a right pain but you just got to keep going at them may might need to soak them in carb cleaner for a, a little while yeah that's blowing through you can see through that but yeah, when you start off, you can't see through them at all. But these ones have cleaned quite nicely. Yeah, cool. So they're all ready to go into the car, into the um, ultrasonic cleaner. So we'll get those in now. Right, so uh, ultrasonic cleaner's all loaded up. So that's it turned on. We'll turn the heating cycle on as well. Um, that's going to be about an hour and a half. Um, I'm going to go out on that and enjoy myself for an hour and a half. And then we'll come back and see how these are doing. Right, here we are at the Piston Club, just outside Stratford on Avon. Um, there's a few bikes here, but there's a lot more behind the hedge over there. So, just have a coffee, a bit of cake, and then we'll probably mosey back and see how the carbs are doing. Carbs are done. And that's some pretty filthy water. Mm. Carbs have come out of the um, ultrasonic cleaner now. Here they are. What I've done is I've just blasted all of the uh, all of the jets, all these air jets, all of the pilot jet and the main jet orifices. Giving them a good clean over. And as you can see, they are significantly cleaner than what we started with, what, an hour and a half ago, something like that. So yeah, so it really helps to clean up the carburetors. Um, the choke mechanism on these, it, it does stick a bit. So what I'll do is I'll just pull these two screws off and give these a little bit of, um, a little bit of attention just to make sure that they're all working properly. And our jets, if we open up our little jet container here, you can see the jets now are looking like brass. They're not looking horrible. But again, we need to go through each one of these. 
because we can't see through any of the holes there so I'll, I'll have to go through and clean each one of those individually but that's all part of the fun anyway oh and we need to work out which ones were the outside two and which ones were the inside two so yeah all that lot's gone through the cleaner they've gone through the cleaner all of our pieces of plastic here our little um, velocity stacks they've all gone through the cleaner um, I've also cleaned the lids they're clean and I've also cleaned all of the needles so you know we had build up of green horrible nuts on there so they've all been cleaned as well so what I need to do now ideally I'll just have to like I say sort this choke mechanism out because they're stiff as hell and they're staying open so I'm going to strip that down and then we're going to clean all this right let's start off with this then so it's just a couple of screws but oh you notice we've got a nice clean piece of uh, cloth down on the bench as well but when you undo these two screws particularly with Honda carburetors you've got some you see this rotary spring here on this set of carbs there's only one well, there it is you just got to be careful when you take them apart because that that will ping off into the middle of next week and we've also got some uh, like plastic sliders that we need to take a note of and where everything goes okay and now I'm just gonna get these choke plungers out because they're individually they're not too bad but they do drag and the trouble is when you multiply it by four then it sticks and stops right um, so we just took the um, choke plungers out of this one a lovely case in point here look you can see the state of that choke plunger it's quite um, you know it's quite tarnished and quite horrible looking and that's because we didn't take it out of the throttle body or the carburetor body before we put them in the um, ultrasonic tank so what I've done I've just taken each one of like you see the before and after there you can see the tarnishing on it so I'm just taking each one and just giving it a quick rub with a bit of um, scotch bright scotch pad I should say and then you just so ultrasonic cleaners are great but if unless you disassemble parts they won't get into you know they won't get into bits bits and places because that's not how they work so yeah quick polish with a bit of scotch bright and that's all for it and done um again blown it all through again with the uh, compressed air so what i can do is i'll reassemble these choke parts now and then we can move on i've got some um these little um jet files and we can move on to cleaning up all the jets with the files but first things first i want to get all that lot back together again and freely but just to make absolutely sure a little bit of rubber grease makes them move nice and free and they're actually I don't know if you can see that but they are actually turning as well so as I'm pulling them out I'm actually spinning them around Let me give each one of those a little nip up and then we can get the actuator arm back on it. Oops. 
it. Just need to nip those up and make sure they're all operating as they should. Right, so last bit is getting these, um, getting this actuator arm on. So, yeah. This is going to be fun, <laughs> he says. You've got to line all four of those up at the same time. And get that spring in place. So you can see there's a little cut out just on the bottom there. That spring's got to go on to. Which is great. Let's try it the other way around, piece of shit. That was a damn sight easier, wasn't it? There we go. Right, let's give that a try and see, there we are, and that's returning properly now, not sticking open, brilliant, so turn the carburetors around again and we can start by polishing these four float valves the teacup to polish these valve seats and all I do is put a little dab on your cotton bud and very lightly press whilst you polish and just give them a polish up and down and you will see they turn black at the ends So that's all I do. And what you want to do is you just want to okay, lightly polish. And you can see all the horribleness coming out. And I just use two cotton buds per valve. And you can see there it's it's kind of taking up the shape of the bottom of the um, valve seat. That's that one done. So I don't know if you can see any difference. I can. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. The difference between that valve seat in there is quite bright and shiny, and that one in there is quite dull. Right, so I don't know if the camera is picking it up, but I can definitely see the difference between that one and that one. But uh, there we go. Anyway, I'll carry on with the other three. Right, so that's all of them in the bin. And believe it or not, they are looking nice and shiny in there. So just to get rid of any residue um, teacup, we'll just quickly give them a spray with um, some carb cleaner and another blowout with fresh air again. So moving on to the jets. Um, emulsion tubes on these all appear to be the same. Sometimes again the number of holes in them differs between carburetor but they're all the same. So the jets we know we had 108s and 105s I think they were and we know the um, the pilot jets were all the same. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with our emulsion tubes. And we're going to find a suitable uh, pokey device here. Because I can't remember the name of it. And we'll just clean through each of these holes. And make sure it's all good. And it is a question of just doing everything meticulously. Um, then we grab a can of carb cleaner. <coughs> And we give it a spray. Now, don't get this in your eyes, it hurts like hell. But what you're looking for is a nice even pattern out of all the holes. So it's there or thereabouts, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, we're coming out of all those holes, so that's fine. So that's one emulsion tube done pop it in the carb and then the jet so we had two different sizes and i'm sure it was christ that was close when you drop these you don't find them again <laughs> so go up until you find the appropriate size little file there you go you're not trying to take any material off these you're just trying to clean them so now if we get the next one we should all go through on that and number four there we are beautiful so that's all four of them cleaned. So I'm going to have to go back and review the video earlier because I can't remember what size jet that one takes. Right, so we've gone back, have a look at the video, and it was 105 on the outside. So that's the 105 main jet. So all we're going to do is we're going to screw them into the top there. And then a little seven mil spanner we can seat that tube make sure there's no gunk on your screwdriver and seat that jet what i've done just off camera i've put the correct jets in the correct holes so what i'm going to do i'm just going to go through and clean all of these emulsion tubes and pop them all in that's all the main jets in and all the emulsion tubes in all cleaned so now we've got to do pilot jets and if you remember we clean these out with a little brass brush before we put them into uh, the ultrasonic cleaner to wash so we'll just clean them through again and yeah you can hear that going through there it doesn't look particularly clean so we'll just give them all a good once over let's say these have very very small holes in and again if you've got a bit of compressed air it's always handy and then on the bottoms of the jets you've got some holes that again we need to go through and clean. Oh yeah, that's clean. That's clean. So I'm doing this because my compressor's out in the van. And it's a long way to walk. Because I haven't got a compressor set up in this garage. I've got two compressors behind the camera, but I haven't got one set up. So. Uh, that's clean yep they're all good right anyway we need to clean the, uh, the little holes in the side of these so back to our little jet files here 
And it's just a question of giving it a tiny little clean like that. One, two, three, and number four. That's it. The thing with carb work is it's all quite slow, quite meticulous, and quite boring. But it's quite therapeutic as well. Just sitting here on a Sunday afternoon. Right. So that's all four of them cleaned. Yeah, we're all good there, we're all good there, we're all good there. <laughs> so we can pop all four of them in. Doesn't matter which carburetor these go in because they're all the same size. And then it's just a question of screwing them down until they seat and then giving them a little nip. Don't go mad with them. Screw them down until they seat and then just give them a little. Beautiful. Number three. Yep. And then number four. That's it. So that's all the jets done. And now we can move on to getting the float valves back in. So, I've got some carburetor kits here with a replacement float valve. That's the old one. You can see the difference. It's all shiny. And if you notice, if you zoom right in, you might notice on the old one, there's a ring around the outside of it. It's very, very difficult to see. But there is actually a ring around the outside of it. And it's where it's sat in the valve seat for years and years and years and not moved. But there is a little ring around it. Anyway, I'm not going to be using those ones in the bin. We'll be using the new one. So, attach it into the float, and then it just goes into the carb. And then you get your, your pivot pin, and just push your pivot pin in, and make sure that's happy. One done, three to go. So, next on the list, replacement float, float bowl gaskets. Um, I'm going to need a pokey device. So that is your old float bowl gasket. Now if you look at that, again camera's going to have a hard time picking this up, but if you compare those two float bowl gaskets, one of them is round in profile and the old one is square because it's been squashed so get rid of the old square one and we're going to put in the new the nice new round one and no it's all right i suddenly thought we had the right wrong ones then <laughs> no right so New float bowl gasket in there. Now when you turn that upside down to put it onto this carburetor, oh, that's not much use, is it? So what I tend to do is use a very small amount of blue Hylomar, which should be in this set of carburetors over here. Yeah, there it is. Because mm. I've said it before and I'll say it again, we do a lot of these. So. Right, jointing gasket. Blue Hylomar dissolves in petrol. We're not replacing this seal with 
the uh, jointing compound, we're just using it to glue that in enough so that when we turn it upside down, it doesn't fall out and it doesn't shift. So now, I'm going to pop that in place. Get our screws and fit it. And that's it. One down, three to go. However, I'm just going to look around the edge and make sure we haven't trapped the gasket anywhere. It doesn't appear to have like popped out of the uh, groove. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. So, like I say, that's one. Got three more to do. Right, so we finished with the float. Uh, the float bowls, all the jets and everything. We've turned the carburetors over, so we're doing the inlets now. So we've got a new gasket. We'll put the new gasket in place. And then we've got the velocity stack and the closing plate there. And all we're going to do is we're going to rotate that. We just need to line that up so that it sits down neatly on there. Or like so. And then we can pop the four screws in that hold it in place. And it's just a question of rinse and repeat. Right, inlets are done, so now we can crack on with the uh, with the top of the carbs. So, da -da -da -da. notice I've turned the carbs round. This is now number one. So, what we want to do? Pop the slide in, carburetor slide. But, if you notice, inside, the needle has not gone in the hole. It must line up like that. Okay. Make sure the diaphragm's all sat down lovely. And then we can get, get rid of that hole. On there. Do, 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 do. Right. Spring on. Spring into the lid. Pop the screws in. One done. Final check. Yep, that's all nice and moving, lovely. Okay. One down, three to go. So last couple of bits, just got to pop on the overflow tubes. Okay, so that's the carburetors all back together again. We've just put the overflow tubes on and the uh, the air, secondary air intake. 
Um, looking a hell of a lot cleaner. I'm not getting covered in horrendous schmoo every time I touch them. Chokes are working properly now as well, so we're all happy with that. And most importantly, we've got no parts left in the tray. So we've used everything that we should have. Um, yeah, so if you haven't watched the first video, link in the description, go back, watch it. That's where we diagnose the issue, take the carbs off the bike. Thank you for watching to the end of this video. And there'll be a part three coming up where we take this set of carburetors back to the customer, fit them on the bike, balance the carbs and ensure it's running properly for him. Um, yeah, so anyway, thanks for watching to the end. Remember to like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you again on the next video. In case you're wondering how much sludge and rubbish came off these carburetors, that's the state of the ultrasonic cleaning tank. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, fun times.